Hello and welcome. We like to go over the um, qualification to enter our raffle. Well, basically, if you have fill out a health questionnaire from our website, you don't need to do that again. If you are doing it for the first time, filling out the HQ on MexicoBariatricCenter.com forward slash health dash questionnaire forward slash. Please select Dr. Miguel Montalvo and we would like you to attend to the end of the webinar to qualify to enter the raffle for $2,000 off of your surgery package. If you have filled out HQ before, you don't need to do that. We just switch you to the surgeon, Dr. Montavo, that is presenting the webinar with me today. And basically um, the procedures that he qualifies you for or he, he offers. So those are the ones you can be qualified for the $2,000 off our raffle. So I want to welcome you again, and um, also welcome Dr. Montalvo. I appreciate that you made time to join us. Um, this is basically our almost monthly webinars that we've been doing after pandemic. And uh, this is our August webinar. So we are going over the um, topics that we always do is that we talk about what is obesity, what are the risks of obesity, weight loss surgery, what weight loss surgery has to offer, what MBC, Mexico Bariatric Center has to offer. And Dr. Montalvo would go over bariatric surgery options we offer, whether it's laparoscopic, endoscopic, all those options. And we end with going over our bari bariatric vitamins and things like that before, after pictures. And we open it up for question and answer session at the end. At that point, once we're done, usually we get about 100 or over 100 question and answers done, but if it's more, sometimes there's not enough time. At that time, we just do the raffle and we end our um, presentation. So, Again, you can click on, click on the Q&A tab and type your question. And please make sure you pay attention because we try to cover a lot of the questions that are frequently asked in our presentation. So, so if you pay attention, we don't have to answer it again and we can answer the questions that are uh, related so whether it's travel related or medical related, I try to do the um, travel related and Dr. Montavo will be the medical related questions. Well, we know what obesity is basically um, is a chronic disease that is affecting the whole world and including US and uh, basically, um, as we know, you know, our genetics plays a major role, our environment and our developmental history. Um, the part of the environment is like the increased nutrient contents of food, fast foods, sugary drinks, sugary food, simple carbohydrate foods and of course, lack of activity, physical activities because of conveniences we have and stress that we all are going through every day, some of us more or less, um, but we all have some at some level of stress. 
And uh, another factor that is affecting us is a inadequate, inadequate sleep. Of course, the weight gaining drugs. As a indication of what uh, obesity is, they came up with a formula that you basically plug in your weight and height and it gives you a number that puts you in this range of being normal. If you're under 25, under 30, it's considered you start getting to the overweight zone. And after that, obese, morbidly obese, super morbidly obese, super, super morbidly obese. And one thing about our center that we're going to cover later on, as you may know, we offer a wide range of services, bariatric services, and we are not limited of what the BMI is. We can do a BMI all the way to 100. And um, so, and then the procedures, we don't stop at just gastric sleep. You know, we, we do bypass. We can do a bypass of patients over 50 BMI, for example, and do a dental switch and rest that doctor until it would cover at the end. Um, something about fat cells is before we were always thinking that, okay, if we gain weight, our fat cell, the numbers go up, but that's not true. Not only the number goes up, the structure of the fat cell changes. And the changes in the chemistry of these adipose tissues or fat cells is responsible for insensitivity to insulin. That's diabetes type two. Insensitivity to leptin, um, which is responsible for satiety and feeling full. Um, you don't respond well to therapies and vaccinations. So, um, Again, obesity is a major risk factor, as we all know. 40% of adults in US are affected by this. I always like this animation to show what happens when we gain weight. And of course, you know, all the other, I think they, they say it's about 40 um, related diseases coming from obesity. And the major ones, of course, is the diabetes type two, heart disease, lung disease, um, you know, um, certain type of cancers, and during COVID, we actually experience what happens if you're not living a healthy life and if our, you know, our BMI is high, that we are susceptible to this um, virus and it's affecting obese people more than normal people and end up being in the ICU or die. And the reason, of course, as you see, we were talking about fat cells is you have more fat cells. So the coronavirus attaches itself. So you have more places for this virus to attach itself. So this is, uh, you know, in human history, we have always looked to see how we can cure obesity. Of course, this is more of a recent years, you know, um, that we have experienced this rapid growth of obesity in the world. And um, of course, diet and exercise is the first thing that comes to mind. And it's not proven to be a long-term solution to cure obesity. 
of course, we always want to exercise. We always want to eat well. Uh, if BMI is high, you know, 35, whatever, over, it's very hard to lose weight. And then it comes pharmaceutical, you know, the diet pills, all the Atkins diets, you know, um, that is out there for years. And then recently, Ozempic injections that have been uh, coming to market and a lot of people are using. Again, those are not long-term solution for obesity. And at this point, the only solution to cure obesity for good is and a permanent weight loss is basically um, bariatrics. Um, we mentioned about the um, Is In the social media, there's a lot going on. Recently, I was reading an article that is causing um, gastric paralysis, which means you your stomach um, becomes lazy so much that it won't empty itself and it causes persistent uh, vomiting and throwing up. Um, the drug makers of Ozempic and uh, Manjaro, they are getting sued right now. But anyway, it worked for some people, of course. You know, it was a medication that was developed to help with diabetes. And then there were some side effects of losing weight. And again, you know, um, aside from the side effects, that could be anything from thyroid cancer to um, gastric paralysis, serious allergic reactions. It could be um, that you have to take it forever because it's not a it's not a solution like bariatric surgery, which resolved this problem once for all. Um, this demonstrates how our body reacts when we go on diet and we try to lose weight. Uh, with diet and exercise, your metabolism actually starts to go down. You get more hungry and you don't get satiety. And that's how your body reacts when you're trying to lose weight with diet and exercise. However, with bariatric surgery, the main, you know, of course, the stomach gets smaller you rear out the intestine and all that. But the main reason and the major that still is a lot, a lot of unknown of how the me mechanism works, it's basically hormonal change. And, you know, at each point, let's say if you're at 250 pounds, our body, our brain, and our gut hormones are operating at a certain level, which we call it body's set point or thermostat or however you want to call it. Metabolic system is set at that point. With the diet and exercise, let's say if you lose 75 pounds with extreme diet and extreme hard exercise, we're talking about boot camp type of exercise and our weight goes down 75 percent, but 75 pounds, but your, our body is reacting to bring you back, to bring us back to the 250 pounds, because that's where it's been operating around. And therefore, it's going to make you more hungry and your metabolism goes down. And that's what happens. Now with the bariatric surgery, the minute you wake up, your brain, because of the hormonal change, because of the changes that is happening in your hormones, 
your brain starts seeing you at 175 pounds, even though you're at 250. So what is going to happen is in the next one and a half years or two years, you, you're going to get less hungry and your metabolism goes up. So you burn fat, you won't eat as much until you get to that 175 pounds that your brain sees you after surgery. So how do, we, how do you get this procedure, life-changing procedure, which is, it extends your life, it cures a bunch of these problems with your heart, with your blood sugar, A1C, and um, so insurance companies, because this is an expensive surgery, because of the supply is needed and also hospital stay you know those are expensive and the insurance companies don't want to cover those so if you are they're trying either not to cover it or if you do have coverage the deductible is high so there comes medical tourism medical tourism offers the same quality or better services abroad and you can use, of course, Mexico, especially Tijuana is, is um, establishing itself as a major center for, for bariatric surgeries. And you can go uh, and get the surgery and come back and change your life, renew your life forever. And so if you are uninsured, underinsured, that's when medical tourism comes into picture. Of course, you want to do your major research and know which company you're hooking up with and making sure that the company is offering transportation and coordination. The surgery and the hospital are well known and they are not a flyby company, or they let you say, okay, well, you drive your own transportation, show up here, and do minimal, minimal. So even CDC recommends that you work with a travel medicine provider, a facilitator that pick you up, take you to the hotel, take you to the hospital, make sure they use the best care for you when you're abroad. And also another thing is buying international medical tourism insurance, which we offer at a deeply discounted rate. So, um, so, M so MBC has been around since 2012. I myself has been involved in medical tourism for bariatrics in Mexico since 2007. And we offer quality medical care with VIP treatment. Um, you know, uh, this is just mentioned very quickly about the power of social media, especially TikTok. And um, you know, anybody can put a before after picture or put some photos on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and people see like, oh, this is, you know, what they're doing, but there may be nothing behind those pictures or those videos or content. You have to do dig more and make sure that the social media that you are, you know, making decision off of is credible and uh, do your research and make sure this company that you go with doesn't use assistant surgeons that just became uh, a surgeon, standalone surgeon and the company is taking care of you before, after, years after, you know, you can go back to them and, and get services. Um, again, NBC, Mexico Bariatric Center, 
is a US-based company, is our corporation and office is in Sacramento. Um, when you go with us, basically you buying peace of mind because we have been committed to help patients um, cure their obesity by providing the highest quality procedures in Mexico. And our prices are the most affordable for the services we offer. So if we were to say, why choose MBC? These are the bullet points that can help you make a decision. You know, um, our reputation, our reviews, um, you know, we have support groups, um, over 10,000 people of our past patients, you know, ease of working with us. You can always talk to us before, after, and in our effort to provide, continue providing high quality services, soon we should have a center that it would be a state of the art and um, it would even um, basically offer more enhanced services for you guys. Um, so these are um, the some of the pictures of the center. Um, picture of Dr. Valenzuela at the very early stage of the construction here. Um, as I mentioned, um, NBC has been around for over 10 years with 20,000 or more than 20,000 successful bariatric surgeries performed at our center. And we work with the top seven high quality bariatric surgeons in Mexico. Our packages are all inclusive and it covers from surgeon fees to hotel nights, to hospital nights, to medication before, after, nutrition support, transportation, um, aftercare with the surgeon liaison that we have. And we have added this I think awesome international medical to tourism insurance that are is still is optional, but is at a very low price for what it covers. And that's the, uh, of course, you know, we always work hard for our patients to be able to have access to the best of the best. Uh, one of the pluses with us is very simple straightforward you fill out the health questionnaire we get your approval once you're ready to go you pay the deposit and you get on the calendar and now you have to arrange for your arrival to san diego international airport and finish your paperwork um, again support group before and after surgery is one of the main factors of success, you know, and um, you can count on us to have support for you. Um, we have our past patients that are in our team helping you every step of the way. Rena, Sarita, Dawn, Kelly, Megan, uh, Elizabeth, so we have at least six of past patients helping us to help you. Um, Rena and Sarita doing occasional podcasts that I recommend you zoom into, tune into, and uh, there's a lot of good information there. Uh, as far as your uh, arrival and departure, we like you to show up in San Diego International Airport, whether you fly, and some people drive if they're local, 
and I want you, we want you to be there before 12 noon and arrange for your departure after 2 p.m. Um, so, oh, as I mentioned, we work with the seven team of bariatric surgeons in Mexico. And Dr. Miguel Montalvo, which is, we have a pleasure to have him here today. Dr. Luisiana Valenzuela, Alejandro Gutierrez, Rodriguez Lopez, Dr. Jacqueline Usuna, and Jesus Ceja. These are the team of surgeons that we're currently working with. And our support system, our approval is unique because as you see, we have a surgeon liaison, bilingual surgeon liaison sitting between all the health questionnaires that you guys submit. And we route the best option for each patient to the best surgeon that fits that patient. And because of the variety of services, bariatric services we offer, that's huge to make sure you are matching with what is best for you, for the best procedure that is for you and best surgeon that is for you. Our pre-op diet is pretty simple. It just basically shows your commitment to this journey. Um, for the BMI of less than 32, we uh, only want you to do a two-day clear liquid and anything after that BMI, you see that it goes to one week, two weeks, three weeks and more. Uh, basically, it's a simple idea of having more protein, less carb, and maybe have more uh, protein drinks and things like that to shrink your liver and we be ready for your procedure. For the hotel accommodations, we use Hyatt Place Tijuana as our main hub, and we use Fairfield Marriott as our alternative. Depends on how busy they are. Um, on the day of the surgery, basically, so when you arrive, we basically take you do all the pre-op, uh, labs and everything you need and we take you back to the hotel to get rested for the next day on the day of the surgery they pick you up at the time they tell you to show up in the lobby and they take you to the um, to the surgery center and that's where you have your surgery you stay there depends on your procedure few nights and you'll be ready to go back home. We do multiple leak tests and you're ready to fly back home. Uh, our success for the patients as far as losing weight and also complications is due to several factors. One is lo surgeon's load management. So basically, we put a cap on each surgeon on a daily basis. And that helps the surgeon to be fresh every day and not be exhausted to make a mistake at the end of the day. And then we create a bunch of issues. Our complication rates has been consistently below 0.5%, which is less than 1%. That is huge. Um, so at this point, I'm going to um, introduce Dr. Miguel Montalvo um, and let him take over. He's uh, one of our best surgeons down. And he's a very educated doctor and his training, his own education shows he's um, specialty in this area. 
Uh, one thing I have to say is our surgeons are not doing, you know, one uh, hip replacement and one bariatric and one something else. They are dedicated to this field. And Dr. Montalvo easily has done more than 4,000 sur surgeries. I think that's actually an old number. With, with being so young and being a certified surgeon and uh, having that much surgery behind him, he's, he makes him one of the best. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let him take over and talk about all the options we offer and then explain each one. Dr. Montalvo, you can take over from here. Thank you. Hello, hello, hi, good morning, everyone. Well, uh, thanks, thanks, Ron. Uh, let's start about the surgical procedure that we can perform. So we have uh, two kinds of uh, procedures. One is the laparoscopic, the other is the endoscopic procedures. Uh, on laparoscopic, we have the, like the gastric banding, the gastric the sleeve, the mini gastric sleeve, single incision sleeve, R and Y bypass, the mini bypass, the venal switch, single anastomosis of the venal switch, and various laparoscopic gastric revision surgeries. And endoscopic treatments, like the gastric balloon, the endoscopic sleeve, and the endoscopic revision bypass. All right, so it will depend of the patient, what kind of characteristic of previous uh, um, like issues have the, the patient. Uh, it will depend what kind of procedure will be the best for, for him or, or her, all right? Uh, obviously, you need to follow uh, a diet and exercise before and after the surgery to have 100 success, all right? Uh, you will need to have some uh, medication and, and pharmacology, uh, nutrients, uh, like uh, supplements to, uh, to, to help you with all this process. Talking about the gastric, the gastric sleep is, a, is a, the surgery most performed at, at the world, all right? Is the most frequently procedure. The, in the gastric sleep, we remove approximately like the 80, 85% of the stomach using from one to five little incisions. And how this will help you, it will change the gut hormones to cause the hungry and the satiety. So you're not going to have more hungry and the society will be less, that this is how you're going to, to lose weight. The expectations is high amount of excess weight loss, removes portion of the stomach that have the ghrelin. This is the ghrelin is the hunger hormone. Uh, you will hold less food and decrease food intake. This will be by minimally invasive laparoscopic surgery, only one to five little incisions. The pros, this can be easily, easily revised if, if we'll need it in the future. Uh, comparable with weight loss or with the gastric bypass, no changes in the anatomy or, or, or absorption, and the recovery will be short, short times. The cost will be worse prick as a reflux or, or GERD. That's, that's why it's very important when you fill up the, the HQ to put if you suffer from this kind of issues. And the, the average of one year excess of weight loss will be up, uh, approximately like the 72%, all right? The duration of, uh, of this procedure will take like, like one hour since you get in the OR and, and we finish the procedure, all right? Uh, the hospital will take two nights and the recovery will take from one to three weeks. It will depend or what kind of activity you do. Now, like we already talked, the restriction would be eat less portions, okay? Because you're going to feel full 
more fast when you take your your nutrients less hungry because it will be because we remove the ghrelin hormone in the upper part of the stomach that we take out there's a ghrelin hormone that is the hungry the more society it will be related with the leptin hormones and the gas reacting is less time to absorb The single incision, gastric sleep. Here, we only take one little incision uh, through the belly button. There's where we uh, perform the, the surgery, all right? Uh, is more like 1.5 inches through the umbilical or navel area. It will be hiding, when we stitch it, it will be hiding and it's no, no will be the scar over there, okay? Uh, no, any any drain tubes are removed. So the expectations it will be like the same on the previous on the on the normal gastric sleeve, right? High amount excess of weight loss, removed portion of the stomach. There's the ghrelin or hunger hormone. Hold less food and decrease the food intake and minimally invasive procedure. The process can be easily revised if needed in a future comparable way loss to gastric bypass and no changes in anatomy uh, and less absorption. So um, fewer scars, incisions, and the cons, obviously patients with GERD or severe reflux can be worse. And then the scopic gastric sleep uh, here, uh, we make, we put a little tube to your mouth uh, and we, uh, the, then the scopic uh, surgeon will shape a tube inside, like it will be like a banana. And this procedure is to utilize restriction to limit how much the patient can eat at a time. The expectations, uh, hold less food and decrease the food intake, lower amount of excess weight loss, no wall suit, suit for patients with gastrointestinal bleeding or a large gettle hernia or previous abdominal surgery. The pros, this procedure is reversible, uh, reduce complication rate, no incisions, short, short uh, recovery time, and the cons, uh, potential risk of partial openings on the stomach pouch or potential risk of ulcers. The average range at what year it will be, it will be uh, 40%. The duration is approximately like the 30 minutes. It will take like one night at hospital and the recovery will be one to to, to three weeks. All right, next. Talking about the RNY, the RNY or the classic bypass, this is the, the, the oldest or the first uh, bypass. This is like the gold standard for, for uh, weight loss, all right? But uh, remember, this was the first, the first uh, procedure for, for, for weight loss, okay? It's like the classic. The gastric bypass surgery forms a new stomach pouch while the remaining stomach stays in place, all right? So the small intestines are reroot by a bypass food digestions, which create malabsorptions and reduce the calorie intake. So the expectations is more significant excess weight loss than sleep. Uh, new stomach form to reduce hunger and limit stomach capacity, resolve the diabetes, diabetes and hypertension and uh, cholesterol, arthritis, and it's better for th this kind of procedure is, is the best option for patients who suffer from severe reflux or GERD. The PROS is now has the gold standard of the bariatrics and improve obesity related comorbidities like diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, PCOS, and high success of rate, okay? The cons, is chance of vomit and dumping syndrome and higher risk of ulcers. The duration approximately of this procedure, it will be like two hours and it will take like two, two or three nights at the hospital and the recovery will be from two to four weeks. Okay, the best surgery for the patient. It will be depend of, of of what kind of information you put on your HQ, 
if you have previous surgeries, if you have a previous bariatric procedure, if you suffer from GERD, from reflux, uh, it will depend, okay? That's why it's very important to put all the information on your, on your HQ, all right? So, uh, like I already told you, uh, if you suffer from, so from so, uh, severe reflux or GERD, the, the best will be the, the bypass, all right? Because uh, if, you, if we perform um, uh, a gastric sleep, then the GERD or the, or the heartburn will be worse, all right? Because it will be, uh, at, we, perform, we, we, we will make like a tube and these two will have uh, a valve. So it will be more pressure inside your, your sleep and you have some, some GERD severe. And with the bypass, we make a small pouch, um, a small pouch on your stomach and a connection directly to your to your small bowel. So there will be no 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 bowels that's that will stop the your your food. So that will be passed. That's what called call a bypass. It will be your food will directly uh, go to your small intestine. So there will be no no reflux. All right. So the the with the sleep we will not altering the anatomy and the 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 success in, in both of them is very high, right? And the weight loss proximity is very, very low, the difference between one or the other, all right? So, but the, the information or your medical issues will be very important to consider. Uh, so put it, all of them, or uh, you take some uh, special uh, uh, medication to put it all under, under HQ. Okay, the next, please. Okay, the mini bypass. Uh, the mini bypass, or it's called the one anastomosis bypass. All right, this is uh, uh, the most, one of the most uh, uh, newest procedure. The weight loss with uh, between the R and Y and the mini bypass is the same, all right? Here in the mini bypass, it's called mini bypass because it will only one connection, all right? Uh, in compare with the classic R and Y that we need to make two connections, but the connection for weight loss on both of them is the same, all right? Yeah, we uh, exclude approximately like two, two and a half meters of the small bowel and we make the connection uh, with the with the with the small pouch. So here in the mini bypass divides the upper portion of the stomach to a tube like a pouch with only holds four to six ounces of food. And the intestine is looped to connect with the new stomach to decrease the amount of calories that you will absorb. So here uh, is um, a, a double uh, procedure because it will be a restrictive and malabsorptive procedure. All right. So the expectations here is to reduce the feeding of the hunger through the altar gut. So early satiety or feeling full after a small portions, reduce calories and nutrients absorbed and resolves diabetes type two, hypertension, cholesterol, uh, arthritis, PCOS, a lot, a lot, a lot of, of medical issues. So uh, here in this kind of Procedure is very important to take your vitamins, your minerals, or all the nutrients. The process here is as a single anastomosis or connections with the intestines in compare with the RMY or the classic bypass that we will need to take to, to make two, two connections or anastomosis. Uh, it's more safe, effective, and shorter procedure than the standard RMY. Uh, is one of the most effective surgeries to reduce uh, gastric sleep or a lab bed. And the cons is a change of vomit and dumping syndrome, high risk of ulcers and change of bile reflux. The average to one year of excess weight loss, it will take approximately at 75%, all right? The duration will take two hours since you get into the OR and we finish the procedure. It will take three nights to the hospital and recovery will take four to 
four weeks, it will depend of how do you heal, what kind of activity do you make, and all that. Next. All right, like if you if you see here the both of the pictures, uh, uh, in the one of the left is the classic bypass. Is there's there's two connections, one uh, directly to the small pouch, the gastric pouch, and and the other is down. Uh, if you see the the other connection is between the two uh, small bowel. All right, and in the in the, one of the right. Um, it will be only one connection of your small bowel with the with the small gastric pouch. So, uh, if you suffer, what's the best the best for you? Uh, I think that here the only the only difference it will be depend of uh, if you how severe is your your reflux or your of your uh, acid reflux. Okay, you have a previous previous surgeries, uh, internal uh, scars. Um, so uh, in, in in both of them, it, we will need to check it your 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 HQ. It's very very important to put all your information there. All right. And the average excess weight loss, it will be the same for both of them. All right. Talking about the duodenal switch, uh, the duodenal switch also no has the bilipancreatic pancreatic diversion with the renal switch or it's a powerful weight loss for metabolic uh, and metabolic surgery. So the expectations is patient uh, lose between 50 and 80% of the excess weight in first year, All right? The high percentage of, of the renal switch patient with type two and diabetes uh, are cured after the surgery. Malnutrition is a problem with this kind of procedure and the vitamin is a must after surgery, okay? You will need to be uh, very strictly with that. Uh, follow it by, by a nutritionist. Uh, the pros is up of the 80%, the 80 of, uh, uh, of success, okay? And it, the proximity will take like three to four hours of durations, okay? We need to make more connections and more time of surgery with this this kind of procedure, okay? Uh, it's extremely strict vitamins required after for life and high risk of other bariatric uh, risk uh, compared with the other procedures. And the hospital would take three nights and the recovery from three to six weeks. It will depend what do you do. This is a combination, this kind of procedure is a combination from a sleeve and a bypass. All right, if you see this, this picture on your, on your right, uh, there's, there's a, uh, like, a, like a gastric sleep and there's, we need to make more connections between the, the, the sleep and the small intestines. All right, that's, that's why it's because it's more, more high risk and take more time of, of surgery. The next one. All right, we know what we are doing, all right? So we, we uh, use, use accredited facilities, our team are uh, with standard infection protocols, screen of patient and staff with CT, COVID-19 tests, we have antibacterial stations available with our facility, uh, fully compliant protective and preventive measures, and do not currently visitation, all right? Uh, we use the mask, the, the social distancing, test prior to travel, and the back vaccinations is very important. Okay, how fast can the patients return to work after bariatric surgery? It will depend what kind of activity uh, do you make, all right? If you're sitting, you walk, your fast pace, your your lifting. So we recommend uh, to, to no lifting from uh, four to eight weeks. All right, and sitting. If you're sitting, yeah, this is not uh, uh, like strictly uh, 
uh, not to, to, to be there. If you make some office uh, work, you can do it with no problem. But the most important here is no lifting to prevent you don't have some injury on your abdominal cavity uh, because uh, from outside you will only will see uh, like one to five little incisions, but inside you need your your you need to heal too your stomach, your small bowel, everything everything need to to heal inside. So that's why we recommend uh, this kind uh, um, of recommendations to not to to lift or to have some something that can uh, hit you or on your, on your stomach, all right? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna take over from here um, and talk about financing, which is, has got more difficult since um, the multiple interest rate hikes that the feds have done uh, but um, we use united medical credit called united credit now e-financing and super money um, so uh, you can do any of the um, options like um, personal loan your bank could be a good place to go um, to secure a loan. Um, again, you can always pay as you go until your surgery time, pay multiple payments toward your surgery. And uh, honestly, our prices are so um, inexpensive that for the for the, for what you're getting it's um you know at least 70 percent less than what you have to pay out of pocket in the u.s we talked about international medical tourism coverage and so you get all these um limits that you see, for, for example, for complication, up to 7,500, uh, travel interruptions, all that stuff is all included. And um, so we got a, so, that, so that's a huge benefit of going with us to be able to get this coverage for so cheap. Um, we talked about bariatric vitamins, yes. Emerge Bariatrics is made out of high quality ingredients and is offering chewable, soft chew, drinkable, and capsule multivitamins that are specifically according to the ASMBS standards made for our patients. And for gastric sleeve, bypass, do the no switch, we highly recommend this. Of course, for bypass and do the no switch, it's almost a lifetime taking these vitamins and make sure you have a long-term success, not only losing weight, but you won't have any other issue with your bone density or like nervous system. So we wanna make sure you are covered for life. Um, at this point, uh, we're gonna open to Q&A so I'm going to try to answer the travel-related questions, and Dr. Montavo is going to cover for um, medical questions. Um, so they're asking about the certification for surgical facilities. So remember that if you were to operate in Mexico, the health the government or federal health department, which is called COFEPRIS, is overlooking all the, of the medical related licenses and things like that in Mexico. And um, if you are a legitimate center and operating, you have to have 
a valid certification from Kofapris. And Kofapris has been recently kind of making things tighter in Mexico and closing a lot of the centers that are not up to code. And once you get certified by Kofapris, is as good as any joint commission international certification, any hospital in the US or anywhere in the world because it's the same standards. So, so as long as a hospital facility is certified by Kofapris, you should be you know, in good hands. Um, they're asking, are we able to do IV fusion therapy session after surgery to replenish hydration? All right, obviously, obviously you will be uh, at the hospital. So uh, you will be with an IV since you get, uh, you get in to the hospital. Since you go, uh, we discharge you to the, to the, um, to the hotel. So you will be with the IV all, all the time. So what would you say is the percentage of complication that can happen during the gastric sleeve and maybe after the procedure is done? All right. Well, uh, this, this, uh, this is, is complex. Uh, this, uh, I don't know if you're related uh, or you're talking about uh, the rate of complications in all the bariatric surgeries is less of 1%, okay? Or, and, and during a procedure uh, or a sleeve or a uh, bypass, I think is, is, too, is less of, of, of 1% one, of 1 too. Uh, and and, and uh, what's the, the, the most frequently, uh, the most frequently uh, risk is, is the bleeding, all right? But this is related of less of 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 one percent. You like the 05 percent, I think, of of all of our surgeries. So it's very very low to have uh, this kind of risk, all right? And 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 after 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 surgery, uh, the the bleeding is the is 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 the most frequently the first in the first twenty four hours. Uh, after that, obviously. Uh, you can uh, exist uh, the the um, wound infection or or uh, other kind of 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 like more, one of the most frequently too is the 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 hydration. So it is very important to keep hydrated the first days after your surgery. Most when you go home. Yeah, and also, you know, I want to emphasize that it's crucial to comply with the post of diet, like Dr. Montavo was mentioning about, for example, heavy lifting, even after surgery, when you're going home, you know, don't lift more than 10, 15 pounds. If it's your suitcase, it's your suitcase or whatever, or you go back, your kids picking them up. You know, even in the plane, like maybe you can get help for your suitcase if you're taking your suitcase with you in the plane to put it in the compartment above, you know, your seat. So things like that, you have to make sure you're complying with. Also, like if you have long distance flight or, or, or driving, make sure you wear compression socks and you get up every hour to move around because these are all factors that you need to do on your end. You know, of course, the post-op diet is also is huge to make sure you go from liquid to solid in four weeks. You know, of course, we send you all the instructions. We have our nutritionist in-house that has webinars at least twice a month or four times a month for pre-op, post-op diet, so make sure you jump on those or make sure you follow the instructions we send you and the doctors recommend. Uh, why do patients regain weight loss 
two years after VSG? This is, this is because uh, the patients don't follow uh, uh, nutrition and don't make some exercise, all right? The most weight loss you will have, it will be in the first 18 to 24 months, all right? After this time, you can continue losing weight, but you need to follow a nutrition plan and, uh, and make some kind of exercise because after this time, uh, the nutritionist need to, to, to take care of the, of the, how much calories that you need. All right. So if you want to continue losing weight, obviously you will need to take less calories and make more uh, activity. But if you, if you feel good uh, in, in, in that weight, uh, you only take, take that calories that you're, you're taking and then you will uh, be in that, in, in that way, you will lose the weight that you want. Well, I, um, if you let me, I just wanted to add some stuff from our experience here. Like basically you're acquiring a tool, you know, for bypass, you have more intrusive, more aggressive procedure where you always have that malabsorption but for, for sleeves, you still need to do your work. You're acquiring a tool. We see, because we talk to our affiliates on our past patients often, we see like, this is a tool that you acquire and you can always use it. If you go back on kind of similar, what they call pouch reset, for example, that you go back on a, like a pre-op diet type because your tool is there and you can always lose the weight and go back. So it's just a matter of how you use the tool. You know, Dr. Montavo mentioned in the first two years, like a honeymoon, you lose weight, but then you have to work to keep it off and work with being active, making sure your diet is correct and keep this off for for years you know there is no limit of how much you can lose and there is no limit of how far you can keep it so it's definitely up to you uh, they're asking how much face-to-face -face time do i get with the doctor before you answer that i want to make sure you know every doctor is a little different but how much time do you spend with the, with the patient before surgery and after surgery. So, all right. Uh, is this, is this, this, is or this is related or how many times we go to, with the patient? Yeah, so how much time do you spend with them before they go to the OR? Oh, uh, well, uh, before, if, if the it's very simple uh the many times that you want to talk with us we will be there all right so but at least one time before we take you to the or and after we finish the procedure and you go back to your to your room we will take another visit to you all right to to check you to check that everything goes great okay and 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 but but as many times that you want to see us, we will be there. Thank you. So they're asking about the drivers and their background checks. So maybe what I should do is I should go over the medical questions so you can. OK, so what complications or side effects should I consider? And um, so we kind of talked about that in a way, but um, Side effects, maybe you can talk about. What are the side effects? The side effects after a surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one is a one is a uh, in in bypass procedure. Will it will be the 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 malnutrition. Uh, you will not going to to absorb all the nutrients. So it's very important to take your pills your um, vitamins, minerals, to, to be hydrated. 
uh, uh, basically it's, it's that kind of, of side effects. The first days you're going to to be tired. It will take time to 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 uh, get back to your activities, but uh, this will be take only time. So if if a patient has abdominal scars from from before, can they still get bypass? Well, it's very important to put this information on your HQ and to know what kind of previous procedures you had. Because some patients don't know uh, what, what past procedure they had. So, uh, uh, so it's very important to, for us to evaluate, to evaluate you if it will be possible to, to make uh, the bypass or the mini bypass, even the sleep, all right? Uh, because it will depend of, of how the scars inside your abdominal cavity. Because sometimes there's a lot of restriction to move, to mobilize the, the small bowel or to make the connections or to, to take off all the scar tissue. Sometimes it's very, very difficult. And here the most important is not to put you on, on risk, all right? So how do you, as a surgeon, keep up with the latest information on bariatric surgery? Like the seminars you attend to keep up with the latest technology, you know, news on the bariatric surgery. Do you belong to certain, you know, congresses or committees? Oh, yeah, 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 so, uh, of course. Uh, um... Some 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 of of our staff, even we are speakers on 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 some uh, congress. Uh, at least we go from two to three seminars a year. Uh, we make here the webinars. Uh, uh, we we uh, are members of the American College or the American uh, Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery uh, members. Uh, and even here at, at, at Mexico. So we have all the, the credentials uh, and certifications. So yeah, they're asking, so gastric sleeve is the same as some people know as VSG which is vertical sleeve gastrectomy. We just call it gastric sleeve for simplification. Um, yeah, we, okay, so this question. So what would be the signs of leaking after leaving the facility? So if there is has a leak. leak. Yeah, if there is the risk is less of one percent, less of one percent. The the first the first uh, risk is a bleeding. The second one is a leak. The third, uh, but uh, it, it can be the the wound infections or other other kind of of like internal hernia, but they are very 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 rare. So. Do they need to see a regular doctor for their incisions after they go back home? For the wounds that you make for laparoscopy? Yes, once you go back to, to your to, to, to home, it's very important to make an appointment with your physician for a follow-up. We we all this information we're going to give it to you. On, on all the release papers, okay, with, with general information and indications. But you need to, to you need a follow-up at, at home with your with your physician. Is one surgery better for people who like spicy food? <laughs> if if they like no, spicy it's food. Not, it's not related, so but but 
uh, you're going to have a gastric procedure. So we recommend not to take spicy food because it will be very irritated to your stomach. Okay, so I think at this point, I have covered most of the medical questions. So I know you had some kind of a um, plan to be with us shorter. So you're okay if you, if you want to leave, you're fine. If you want to stay, I'm just going to cover the travel related questions now. So it's, it's up to you, Dr. Montalvo, if you want to leave at this point. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Ron. And right. and yeah, we appreciate you take time and joining with us and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, you too. Okay, goodbye. Okay, so I'm going to go over the travel related questions now. Um, one is they're asking about the uh, driver's background checks. So that's a, that's a plus you get with the companies like us that we have been in business for so many years and the drivers we've been using are proven like, like Willie. Willie has been working with us about 10 years. Uh, he's one of our experienced drivers, his and his team. And like he uses his wife, other people he knows. And remember, uh, Tijuana is a small community and the one we have people who are in charge of transportation, they pick the people that they can rely on day in and day out. So you get experienced drivers that have clean backgrounds and you should be um, safe and be at ease, you know, when you come in with us. Uh, as far as transportation, so we pick up patients as they come in and we said, you, we want you to come in before 12 noon. At the same time, when we're taking them out, usually we take, we ask to get your flight at two, but if your flight for some reason is not, is after two, we usually have, you know, another um, transportation that goes, you know, after the first one. So you should be okay. So the way it works is the driver um, contacts the patient the day before their departure from their home. And they introduce themselves, they give them a number to cell phone, they can text and call. Once you arrive to San Diego International Airport, you basically contact and say, hey, so, so the way it is right now, if you haven't been in the San Diego International Airport, there are two uh, terminals, Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Terminal 1 is Southwest Airlines, and Terminal 2 is all the other ones, Delta, United, American. So right now, they've been doing some, no, not some, they're doing re doing the terminal one, which is kind of a mess. But once you get your, once you arrive, you get your suitcase, all you do is come out and tell the driver which uh, on the curbside there are alphabets, A, B, C, D, whatever. You just say, I'm like waiting for you at station F and then they come and pick you up. Very simple. We talked about the vitamins. Um, Bariatric vitamin is called Emerge Bariatrics is what we recommend for you because it has the exact ingredients and nutrients that you need to take after bariatric surgery. Um, of course, the most popular surgery that we have right now is the sleeve, but then some people because of reflux, because of other situations, maybe metabolic, uh, conditions they have, issues like that, they may be qualifying for other procedures and we are not limited to what we can offer. So we always give you what is best for you.
So when we said, if you don't have a job that requires lifting or get you exhausted, you find to go back to work after one week. Uh, you just, again, have to listen to your body. We all recover at a different rate. So you kind of know, I mean, as long as you don't push yourself, you, um, so you, you're fine. Um, so these places, for example, the hotel hospital we're using, they're at the prominent zones right next to the border to the San Diego. And we just using the safest, and we've been doing this for years. So once you come with us, basically, you should be at peace of mind. Um, so if you're driving yourself, yes, you can meet the driver at the airport. So you just find a parking, airport parking, how, whichever you want to use, and you get the shuttle going to the airport, and then the driver picks you up from there. Do you your FMLA and your time off from work and all that for you so you don't have to worry? Um, yes. So as far as COVID and mask and vaccination, so we don't require vaccination. Of course, vaccination is something that helped ending the pandemic. Mask, it's up to you. I mean, during travel, if you want to use it. And COVID test, we ask you to do COVID test for yourself and companion before you arrive before you depart from your home actually, but it's not mandatory. We're just recommending that. Um, so if you, if, you, if you need a gallbladder removal, we could do it at the same time as the surgery. We do recommend you have passport to just make sure you have an easy way and no surprise coming out of the Mexico to US. You can start your vitamins before surgery, of course, you know, um, but it's most, it's best if you do it after surgery, basically, you know, a week or two after surgery, depends on what type you, um. okay, so about companion. So after COVID, we did not keep companions in the hospital and it's proven to be the best practice. Now, we do have visitation. So the companion stays in the hotel with you on the first night. The second day after surgery, they come visit you. And then, but they still stay in the um, stay in hotel. Uh, usually, so we so with this package we offer standard medication. If you need more, for whatever reason, you know, um, then there's extra charges. But usually, it's not much. Um, but that something can happen. So, so we recommend you do a blood test before you come, especially if you're a revision patient. Because once, let's say if you do bypass, there could be a possibility that your hemoglobin levels are low. At that point, you would know before you come, so you start taking care of it. So when you get down there, 
when we do the blood test, it won't show that your hemoglobin is down. So we don't have to keep you on extra day or do a blood transfusion. So it is highly recommended, especially for revision surgery, surgery patients to do the blood test before they come. It's not mandatory, but it's recommended. Um, actually, um, they're asking about back pain. Uh, we do um, have several articles about back pain. Um, so, you know, sometimes even back pain can happen when you're laying down on the bed in the hospital. Again, depends on the type of the mattress there is in the hospital. But then because you're laying down for so many, for two or three days, that may contribute to back pain. In general, when you lose weight, it should relieve some of the back pain. But there are so many things associated with back pain. Um, you know, because you if you carry, you know, extra body weight that for so long, you know, it it would definitely. Um, cause back pain. Now, if there are questions that you didn't get the answer to, especially if they're medical, you can send it again back to the coordinator and we can try to answer that. So um, I'm sorry if uh, doctor had to leave early. And um, so, so when you're leaving Mexico coming to US, we recommend that you have all your medications out next to you. So if at the border they ask you, you can have the prescription and the medication to show so we don't have any issues. Um, Again, if you don't have passport and you're coming with driver's license and birth certificate, that's again, we don't recommend, but hopefully we won't have any issues. Depends on the, you know, the officer at the border. Sometimes, you know, they just um, pull you to the secondary for several reasons. That could be one. Passport cards is as good as passports because you're crossing a land border. So at this time, almost all the patients are in single rooms. They're not sharing a room, but sometimes they are asking to be shared with another patient. We have some double bedrooms too, we can do that. We, we are, yes, if they remove, that's one thing that our surgeons do. They look to see if you have hernia that needs to be repaired, especially during gastric sleep, because if it's not repaired, you will get reflux, gastric reflux. So it's important for them to check, make sure the hernia doesn't need repair, but if it does, they would fix it and you just pay the extra fee. Same thing with gallbladder. So companion pays for the two nights in the hotel at a discounted rate. So 
the age is we cover anything from 16 to 65 years old. And uh, the upper limit is basically based on how healthy you are because age is one thing, but what condition you're at each age. So we have done surgeries on people who are 70 years old, but then you have to have a good heart and you know your condition should be good enough for surgery. Okay, hair loss is, you know, some patients experience hair loss. And the reason because you're going through a surgery and your body gets shocked. It would be temporary in the first six months if you experience that, but you can uh, pretty much prevent or make it, minimize it by taking, you know, multivitamins and vitamins, you know, biotin and things like that. So as far as medications, you list all the medications on the health questionnaire and our surgeon liaison and the surgeon would tell you which one to stop and which one not to, and depends on what it is. So also, of course, you know, you don't want to have anything that is blood thinner before surgery. And we recommend all the medications you take in the original bottle with the label on it, take it with you. Uh, even if you're not supposed to take it, still take it with you down there. So we do have a safe in the um, hospital room and hotel that you can lock up your stuff. We, I don't know our uh, next webinar for September. I do know that if you go to Mexico Bariatric Center, go under events, you always see what's the next um, webinar. And actually, this is a good point to remind that before COVID, we used to actually go to cities across US and Canada and basically um, do a presentation and actually be there phys physically. Um, after COVID, we started doing the webinars online. We still want to go back and do some in a year. Um, so let's say if you guys are finding, you know, like people who are interested and you have a list of them that makes us to have enough people to show up. Of course, we do our own announcements and things like that. But if you particularly have a group that are interested, um, you know, in areas, I mean, we've been in Atlanta, um, you know, um, Seattle, Oregon, um, Texas, in Houston, um, Dallas. So these are the areas that, you know, Tulsa. So if you guys are from those areas or areas that have enough interest, let us know and we would actually show up and do a webinar. Uh, I mean, seminar, I'm sorry. So, okay. So I think except one or two medical that, medical questions that I missed, uh, we pretty much answered everything. Um, so I'm just gonna go over the before after pictures very quickly. I mean, we have thousands of these on our support group. Patients uh, post these to be a role model for the ones that are coming to be on the losing bench. Um, and um, at this point, I'm going to um, do the raffle. So I have a list of the people who 
did the HQ and qualified and they basically attended the webinar all the way to the end. And uh, we're going to draw one name here and um, see who that patient is. And we will be, um, so I am uh, holding the name. Let me read it. Shay Izaguar. I don't know if I told you uh, last name correctly. I'm going to let you talk to us in a minute. Uh, attendees, okay, so let me see here. Um, there you go, Shay. I'm going to let you talk so um, you can unmute yourself and start sharing um, how you heard about us, what's um, what procedure are you thinking? And tell us more about yourself. Shay? Hello. Can you hear me OK? Yes, yes. Hi, how are you? Oh, uh, well, really good now. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So where do you live? Um, so I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow, yes. Utah is another place we've been several times and we love to go back. Oh, yeah. Months. Yeah. So, so, um, so are you ready to go? What procedure do you, uh, are you considering? Did you get your approval yet from our surgeons? Yes, I have approval already for the sleeve. Okay. And yeah. I am ready to go. I found today's okay. webinar very helpful. Okay. Um, yeah, and ready to go. I'm hoping for sometime in September if possible. Awesome. Yeah, so I will have the coordinator. Do you know who is your coordinator by any chance? Um, Angie. Oh, okay, okay. So I would let them know to contact you and uh, make sure you get on the calendar. I appreciate you guys for taking time and joining us. And we will be back in September Again, let us know if you have a group interested and we will come to your uh, town and do this live, okay? And I wanna thank Dr. Montalvo again for taking time and be with us. I appreciate every one of you. Have a good rest of the day. Goodbye.